Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel, on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hopefully you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box down below for all the nice links. Also drop a like, subscribe if you like the content. Check out Discord as well, the link's down in the description, also my support page. That stuff helps me out a lot. But here we go, this is a new series and this is a series I really, really wanted to do for a long time since I really love this programming language. Now my background is C++ and C and I do work as a software developer in C++ and Java <laughs> and C um, but C Sharp is something that's really just taken me by surprise. I, I, I love this language and the .NET framework is so great. Uh, it's, it's what I want it to be. It's what I wanted Java to be and it's just nice and flexible. So I know a lot of you might not be 100% into C sharp in these interpreted languages, but we'll go through that what the language is at a later time. I want to tell you about this series now. What is this series? We're going to be creating a console RPG. Now, if you have been on my channel before, watch my other series, you probably know that I have a console RPG series for C. And the reason I'm doing the same thing in C sharp is because I really love this concept. I love making RPG games, I can make these a thousand times over. And doing it in C Sharp is just such a treat because it's so much easier, so much more straightforward. And it's going to be cool. It's going to be really fun. And it, it might not all be the same. We're going to have colors here. We're going to have different types of things. So don't think it's exactly the same. And it's a great way to learn a programming language by making a deep game like this because you use just about every part of the language. Um, I just want to say straight off, I'm not an expert in C Sharp. Neither am I an expert in any type of programming language, but... I do think that I, I know how to code in these. C Sharp, I'm not that experienced in, as I said, pretty new to it still. Uh, but I do know how to code, I do know the stuff, and hopefully following this, you can learn as well. Although you might not learn uh, everything, you learn something. Well, this game is going to be text-based, right? It's going to be a deep RPG game, with that I mean it's going to have RPG text showing up, and you, you can attack enemies, you can do all that stuff. And it's going to have a bunch of items and loot and inventory, everything like that. Character development, um, enemies, bosses, of course, dungeons as well, randomized, unlimited leveling. Uh, we're going to use an algorithm for leveling, so there's no limit to it, but it's going to get really hard to level after a certain level. Uh, it's going to go like, like curve upwards, right? It's going to be harder and harder. Random generation, well, with that, going back to items, loot deep RPG games. Everything is going to be randomized. It's not going to be set. We're not going to have set items set. Everything is going to have procedural generation, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to go go deep into that, the randomization using seeds and stuff. And then we're going to be using states. And states are really cool because especially in a in C sharp where you can create states very easily. We're going to have a game state, menu state, and different types of states where we send data and that data can be accessed in any state. And it's a really good way to make games and menus and stuff like that. So we're going to be going deep into that. I'm sure you can use that in your other games and projects. So to start off, let's just go ahead and install Visual Studio. To install Visual Studio, you want to Google just Visual Studio. Go to this link up here. Download the Community 2019 version and start installing it. So if you've installed Visual Studio before, you'll get to this window. Otherwise, after downloading and everything like that, you'll get to you'll come to another window which looks more like this. If I click modify, if you already installed it, you can also click modify. You'll come to this window where um, you can find all the packages that you can add to your Visual Studio installation. What you want is <clears throat> the one down here, uh, right here in .NET Desktop Development, and you can develop using C Sharp, Visual Basic, F Sharp with .NET Core and everything. And you can build all kinds of applications, console applications, Windows forms, using real application windows and everything. We'll get to that as well in a future tutorial, but that's what you can do. Uh, I do have ASP.NET now, that's for web development and online stuff. So just notice the difference, .NET Core and then ASP.NET Core and it's a little different. And then you can do .NET Core cross-platform development where you can code for uh, code with all kinds of languages and you'll get a bunch more stuff for cross-platform stuff. You can read more about it. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I do know about these two. Uh, 
So as long as you install these, you should be fine. Check out any other packages you might want to play with. Sure, why not, right? Language packs, everything. Go ahead and click those in, whatever you want in here. And then you have a bunch of individual components. You don't need to click any of these. Just make sure you have these. Now, then you just go ahead and press install and it will do that for you. Once you install your Visual Studio, you go ahead and open it and you'll be greeted by this. If you're on a different platform, Mac or uh, Linux, uh, it should still work for you. You just follow the instructions and it should be good. You can Google Visual Studio, go to the tutorials there and it will show you what to do. But I'll go ahead and show you those links in a minute. First of all, we're going to create our project. So click create project and you're going to be greeted by a bunch of different things here. Lots of different things that you can click and do stuff. Uh, you don't want to really care about all that. What you want is the console app.net core. Now this is a different one for Visual Basic, but we're going to be doing C Sharp. So just go ahead and click that. There is ASP.NET web application, blah, blah, blah. If you go down, you'll find even more obscure stuff. Just go ahead and double click that and you'll be, uh, you'll be seeing this window. Now name, name it whatever you want and put it wherever you want. If you click this, it will let you put it somewhere else. I'm going to just call it C Sharp console RPG console state RPG It's a long ass name but I'll, I'll use it and just go ahead and create that and then we'll see what happens once this project is created once it's created you'll see the screen and we're gonna go through this thoroughly but before we do let me just show you the links I'm talking about when you're here in Visual Studio here you can see a lot of information about stuff here and you can find a lot of information on their site as well. But what I can do, what you can do otherwise is go to C Sharp Tutorials, Microsoft Docs. And here you'll see a bunch of tutorials on C Sharp, F Sharp, and anything you want to learn when it comes to .NET, .NET Guide. And it will tell you about different platforms and different things and how to probably install stuff as well. Uh, framework Guide, you got a bunch of guides here. And you have a Getting Started, which is really good get started and it will tell you how to work with different um, Visual Studio versions and everything. Uh, otherwise, I do like Tutorials Point. I really like this. I want you to use this if you if you are in the mood. Obviously, you don't have to. Uh, I'll try to explain as much as I can. I'm no expert, like I said. So this could be really beneficial for you if you're trying to learn C Sharp very, very properly. So go through this at least once, I'd say, and learn these things and learn how to work with C Sharp and read, of course, read a book on, on this subject as well, .NET and C Sharp. And ask me if you want uh, which type of book I'd recommend. I, I don't know it on top of my head, but I will tell you. If you do ask me, I'll look it up uh, or for the next video. But still, go ahead and check these pages out. They're really good for you, and I'm sure you'll learn a lot. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this. What you see here in Visual Studio is your main window where your file is open. You can see which file is open here. You can see your solution. That's basically a big package, your solution file, where you have all your files. It organizes everything for you, all the settings. And then you have your class files here within this, this, uh, uh, this sub project. And then you have all your class files down here. If you open these further, you'll see what classes you have within here, within this, and what functions you have. Uh, dependencies, .NET Core app. Find a lot of stuff there. You don't need to care about all that stuff. For now, all you want to know is this is your class file program.cs and whichever class you have one static void main in this function this is called a function. Uh, assuming you don't know programming at all, I do recommend you do learn programming before you start this series because it's going to be a little faster than you might expect. I'm not going to go through every little detail, uh, but I'm going to tell you basics at least. So this is your main function. If you're from C++, it's just going to be void main, right? This is your main function in a class program. Now you can't have more than one main function, obviously. It's gonna go bananas on you right quick. Uh, but what this function does is just prints out to the console, it writes a line with the string hello world. Okay, you don't have to care about these arguments right here, in here. Uh, you can pass in arguments from the command line if you want when you run the application. We'll do that as well, we'll have fun with that. Uh, but you don't have to touch that right now. This class program is like Java, right? This this basic structure is like Java. This encapsulates your function in here. So this could be your class game, could be a class 
character inventory it can be any class here you can have several classes in this in this place down here but the namespace is what is so cool this is what i love this is how java works as well uh, it has a namespace and any class you create within the scope of the namespace the scope is basically between these two curly braces uh, nothing is anything in here uh, within these curly braces is not accessible outside the same thing goes for this class here and this function and everything so with between curly braces that's his scope and that stuff won't be accessible outside of that scope anyway you have this namespace when you create a new class file or any new class a namespace will be created as well with the same name so you can directly access that class as long as it's within this namespace with within another namespace basically so you can access stuff everywhere anytime you want that's really cool really helps when you're making a game and it's really going to help when we make an sfml game using this as well uh, but for now that's good to know so that's what a namespace is basically a big box classes smaller boxes so you kind of have a big box with smaller boxes with smaller boxes in them using system this is your includes if you're from c c++ uh, basically it includes different libraries that you might want to use so if i do using system dot you'll see that system contains the other stuff here as well um, and there are a lot of good things here you can read about these collections buffers all these things i'm not going to go through all of those as long as we don't need them uh, but you can read about them in the tutorials basically that you just put in a bunch of books from a library shelf into your little box that you have and then you can use those that functionality so that's what this is you're including different functionality someone made to make it easier for you so you don't have to implement that yourself and these are our standard libraries there's a different difference between standard libraries and third-party libraries and we'll get into that later as well but standard is what comes with the package you don't have to think about it anymore it's very standard and nice and clean and it's optimized uh, so there you go if we run this application you'll see a line which says hello world right there and it will tell me to close the window I can write anything else in here I can say hello world uh, going to sleep you can edit this here if you want run that again and you'll see a new string going to sleep okay and the thing right line does which is different from right is that it puts a new line after so you can write different lines like rows basically and that's why that's good now before I end the video I just want to say that again take everything with a pinch of salt relax read about it watch the video if you need to watch it again do it if my voice is annoying don't watch it go watch someone else's video but still if you like this type of series where we make a game with a new program language stick with me I'll do my best all right drop some comments please drop a like subscribe as well really helps me out tell me what I can do better and I'll try okay I'll do my best thank you so much for watching take care I'll see you guys and girls in the next one right bye bye